what I really want to know is are these the best players, not just in the game, but also in real life? Gianluigi Donnarumma. This is a guy who's 22 years of age. He won the European Championships. He made team of the tournament, but even bigger still, he was voted player of the tournament. He's able to save the finesse shots, he's quick on his feet, he's taught to catch corners and stuff like that, so it's hard to say he's not number one. In this back four, we have Hakimi, Marquinhos, Ruben Diaz and Joao Cancelo. In terms of best attacking right backs in the world, he's definitely right up there. Like I, I'll be honest, I, I'm a bit biased, I like Kyle Walker, but I can see why he's picked. I think he's the best right back in the game. He's got the pace, he's strong as well, but defensively. In terms of real life though, I'll be honest, I would actually have voted Trent. Don't get me wrong, he keep me I beg your pardon, year. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see it, I'll be honest, I'm gonna see it. Playing Marquinhos, I think he's their leader. His, his style of play, his aggression, his composure, his sort of like die hard attitude on the field. I think he sets the tone for that club. He's quick, he's agile, so he's keep, able to keep up with the fast skill moves and stuff like that. He's good in the aim though, I think he's only six foot one in game, so it's not too mm. tall, but he's a, he's a crazy defender, definitely one of the best CBs. Everyone's been using him. So this is Ruben Diaz now, okay? City's very on. Talk about a player hitting the ground running. In his first season, he basically won every individual award possible within the league. You can see how he kind of helped change the dynamic at Man City. Well, without doubt for me, deservedly in the team of the year. Hopefully they gave him a huge pace boost because I think he's done a bit, done a bit dirty. It's a bit harsh, isn't it? It's a yeah, bit harsh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen those numbers. Yeah, I've seen those numbers. <laughs> yeah, it's not as good as it should be. I remember your card back in the day. I can't remember what FIFA it was. But... The man that is Joao Cancelo. So I was trying to think, how could I describe this guy and what he does? And then I said, well, how about you show his assist for Sterling, I think against Everton, the outside of the foot cross or ball or whatever that was. But look at the angle from behind him, where there's no place to play the ball and nobody's got any reason to think that's the right thing to do. Cancelo's been a fan favourite of FIFA for the last few years. He's quick, he's able to catch up with defenders, good going forward with four-star skill moves. His passing's incredible. I did think he struggled the first time when he joined City, but the last season and a half, he's been incredible. And we have a midfield three here of Kevin De Bruyne, Jorginho and N'Golo Kante. Kevin De Bruyne. I think, in the real world, He's the best passer. I think he's the best passer out there. I think he sees things which nobody else sees. Even when I watch something back, I'm still like, well, how did he see that? Because I still don't see that now. But as well as that, he's got the ability to be able to make that pass. And of course, the pace, added pace, the long shots, the passing, as you mentioned, which is, in my opinion, again, best in the world and the best on the game. So yeah, he offers a lot going forward as well as contributing defensively. Jorginho. So what a year he had. And everything that was good about Chelsea and Fritzley seemed to go through him. His composure on the ball, his ability, his passing ability ability to read the game, set the tempo. He's had an incredible season and when you're the main guy in both teams, you, you just got to give it to him. What's the saying again? I think it's 70% of the world's surface is covered by water and the other by N'Golo Kante. I think that's <laughs> I think that's what the that's what the phrase is. And I see it because his energy is through the roof, but it's not just headless in terms of how he runs. He affects the games in his runs, whether it's running to try and press, running forward to give someone an option, running back to try and clear something up. And as well as that, his reading of the game is fantastic. On the game as well, it translates really well. He's good at pressing, he's quick, he's aggressive in the challenge, he's good at tackling, everything as well. And I just feel like on the game, he's a perfect CDM to have. We have a front three of Lionel Messi, Robert Lewandowski and Kylian Mbappe. Let's start with Lionel Messi. Bias is here. He's my favourite player of all time. The bias is well and truly there, so I'll defend him to high heaven. You could have a year where he scores one goal and I say, yeah, but it's the greatest goal that's ever been seen, even if it was a tap-in. You know, as soon as he cuts in on that left foot, I think he might as well just start ready to get <laughs> defending off pick-off because he's incredible. He's Robert Lewandowski. It's getting to a point where everyone will just accept that he is the best number nine in the world. The way he does it, the goals he scores, right foot, left foot, headers, he can be a target man, he can stretch it in behind, gets tap-in, scores from 20 yards out for the crazy amount of goals last year, lethal in front of the box. And again, he offers the physicality as well. He's good, he's quick on his feet as well. Kylian Mbappe, he's the type of player like, when I watch them on TV, I'm glad I'm retired because to come up against that for 90 minutes, is just, it's hard work. The skills there, the understanding of the game, the, the, the like desperation to score goals. And I'll be real, I'm terrified to see this team in the year cards in front of me because he is lightning quick, just like in real life. His shooting is incredible, the skills, the flair. He's honestly a crazy player. Definitely taking that crowd as the best, probably the best attacker in the game. 